All right, Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. Revelation 19, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon fought his angels. Now, Milton's Paradise Lost has taken that verse in verse 7 and put it in the past. Whenever you see the devil getting kicked out of heaven, it's always before Adam and Eve, right? Well, that's wrong. You see, in the Bible, he's not kicked out till later. So John Milton did a disservice to humanity by making you think the devil's all through up there in heaven and he's down in hell now. He's not, he's not in hell. In Danny's Inferno, he has the devil down in hell. Now, the devil's not in hell. He's still moving around. So there's war in heaven. Isn't that something? I'd like to get home to heaven and find war declared when you got there. <laughs> yes. Well, the way that thing works is the devil's sphere of activity or his sphere of power diminishes by stages. And there are five stages that thing diminishes with. I'll make this thing here. We'll put the earth here. We'll put the bottomless pit in the middle of the earth here. We'll put the third heaven there with a sea of glass on it there. We'll put the solar system and the galaxies and the constellations sitting out here and the clouds down here. And they'll put a lake of fire down here. All right, uh, Isaiah chapter 14, How thou fall from heaven, loose for son of the morning. His sphere of activity was over the throne. The fifth cherub, the anointed cherub that covers. First time he was cast down, his sphere of authority was cast from the third heaven down to the second heaven. We'll make it this way. Then when Christ in his time was preaching, he said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven, the book of Matthew. In that time, his sphere of activity is brought down to the first heaven, down the atmosphere and around the solar system. In the tribulation, the devil has come down to the earth, having great wrath, for he knows he hath but a short time. In the tribulation, he is, at the end of the tribulation, he is cast into the bottomless pit, and at the end of the millennium, he is cast in the lake of fire. So his course is straight down, and it goes once, twice, three times, four times, five times, because he's the fifth cherub, and five is the number of death, never the number of grace. That's why you spell his name with five letters, and he's the fifth cherub. Where is this one at, though? This what? This one right here. Uh, That'll be his sphere of activity is from here down to the ground, and the tribulation, his sphere of activity, will be right where we're sitting. And thank God I don't, I don't want to be here when, that, when it gets in there. The ruler of this earth in the tribulation is the devil. Yes. He has access to it. Yes, he has access to it right... No power. His power is gone. Yes. What, what, what? his sphere has been taken away from him here and he comes up one more time and tries to get it and loses it and that time he's put down to here. So it's down all the way. Pride goes before destruction, the haughty spirit before a fall. Amen. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 there was war in heaven and Michael now the, in, the insertion of Michael shows you what's going on because in Daniel chapter 12 verse 11 Michael is said to be the great prince that standeth for the children of thy people, to Daniel. So it's a Jewish context. There was war in heaven and Michael, that's the prince for the Jews. So we know that woman in 12, one is Israel. Now knowing that, we, we find something very important. Verse 17, the dragon was raw with the woman, as Israel, and went to war with the remnant of her seed, Israel, which worked keep the commandments of God and grace have the testimony of Jesus Christ. All right, verse, uh, verse 8, And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and the Satan. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now when he comes down, he takes a third part of them, verse 4. I don't know how many there are up there, but a third part defect. 
So the greatest rebellion is yet in the future. The greatest rebellion of angels against God is yet in the future. And a third of them leave. Now you say explain all that business there. I, don't, I can't explain all that thing there. I don't know why they'd follow him after seeing the church age and seeing that book and seeing that thing fulfilled and fulfilled and fulfilled and fulfilled. I don't know how they would. I don't, why, I, don't what, I don't know what he'd tell them to him to get him to follow him. But then again, uh, there were years and years when some of you were blind and deceived, wasn't there? And the years and years when you lived in sin and went out there and believed what the devil told you. And there's some of you that uh, knew some of these things were true and still didn't get saved. And after I got saved, I went back to witness an old hillbilly singer I used to play drums in a dance band with. He was out here at the Diamond Horseshoe, which is torn down now, I think, out there at Mobile Highway 98. And I came up to him and I said, you know something, Bill? I said, I just found out something. I said, I found when I was playing with you out here in these uh, dives that I was just a poor old lost sinner on my way to hell. And I, I said that to him on the, on the dance floor. The guy was, when I, I came to this nightclub passing out tracks, and he was up there whacking his guitar. Everybody up there dancing about eight feet behind. I walked right up to him on the microphone and then talked right through the microphone, both sides of it. While I, and he was strumming between choruses, you know. And I said, I just pulled off, sent him away to hell. And I never forget old Bill. His name was Bill Hendricks. And he was hitting that guitar, and he said, oh, I said, didn't you know that? <laughs> I didn't such a shock in all my life. I mean, I went out of that building, I thought to myself, well, that guy knew that all along. And he's some old southern boy raised in Alabama, see? He's about 25, 26 years old. He had a Christian mother. He knew about heaven and hell all his life. He knew we were all going to hell. He knew all the time we were playing. Never said, never opened his mouth to me about it. <laughs> it was a revelation to me, you see. When I thought I was going to hell, I got saved, man, as soon as I found out. I was a bourbon in Stanford 25 years. Christian mama, Christian daddy. No one was a devil, no one was a heaven, no one was a hell, no one how to get saved. Still not saved. I mean, the devil's got power. Got power.